thing that's so interesting about vision is there are so many good things that can be done. Uh, but we understand that we can't do everything all at once. And so we have worked very hard at finding that one thing uh, that we feel that God has for us as a church to focus on next. And this isn't that other ministry opportunities aren't important. They, they are. And, and we will continue to fulfill our, our mission and our vision and our values and everything that you just heard uh, Terry speak about with excellence. But we wanted to know what that one unique thing that God has in store for encounter heading into the next few years. And, and after a lot of discussion and a lot of prayer, we feel that God has placed on our hearts the youth and the young adults of this greater Palmyra area, and that he has something truly amazing to do with that, with them, with us. And I want to give you just a brief background of that process and how we arrived at that conclusion, uh, but then specifically where God is taking us with that. So I've been here at Encounter for a little over four years now, and you may know my story, maybe not. I started as the junior high youth intern. Yes, junior high youth intern. But one of the things that impressed me the most when I got here was how much this church prioritized and cared about youth and young people. You know, when I, when I first walked in, to, to see the amount of volunteers that were giving of their time, the, the amount of empowerment and the encouragement of the young people in this church to get involved in Sunday mornings in various capacities, on the tech team, back in Kids Connection, serving on Frontline, you know, serving just in various capacities, they were just used all over the place. But the thing that stood out to me the most was when I came, we were just in the middle of our uh, unfinished capital campaign to finish up the, the building. We weren't quite there yet. But the thing that stuck out to me is when we refinished this building, we started and finished the kids' areas and the youth areas first, while everybody else on Sunday morning met in the lobby for almost three years until finally this sanctuary that we're sitting in now was finished last. And that was just an unbelievable testimony to how much this church, our church, cares about and prioritizes young people. It was just such a critical component, and that was a really important realization for us as we were going through this process. And then the next thing that we looked at is our location. Now, if you know anything about the history of how we got here, you'll know this already, but there's lots of people in here today and watching online who don't know that. And so the brief story is this. There's a long story. This is the brief version. So we had been meeting in a church on Main Street, and we decided to buy some land just outside of Palmyra, and we purchased that land. And when we purchased it, we suddenly were feeling very, very strongly that we needed to be in Palmyra, and not to build a new church building on that land that we had just purchased. And so in this time of discernment, we were like, what are we going to do? And this building, an old Redner's, an old Save You Mart, came miraculously available for us to buy. And so we did. We sold that land, we bought this building, and we completely refinished it and renovated it, and now we have this amazing facility. And this is the thing that was really kind of the, the I don't even know what you want to call it, was so fascinating. And when we look back over the history, it is so easy to see God's hand in all of this, bringing us to this spot, directly next to the high school, directly next to the community pool, to the park, directly next to the brand new sports fields that were just built by the high school, just down the road from the middle school and the football stadium. And all of this is within walking distance of this building. We thought, okay, clearly this church has such an amazing history and is passionate about youth and young people, and we're at this prime location but how many youth and young adults are in this area? And so we did some research. And some very simple research revealed some statistics to us. In Palmyra alone, there's about 7,500 people. 7,500 in Palmyra. About 2,000 of them are youth and young adults. 2,000. 
in Palmyra. We said, that's remarkable. Well, what if we, we just put Palmyra at, or Encounter Church at the center and we extend that radius to five miles? How, how many people, youth and young adults, are there in just a five-mile radius of Encounter? And that number jumped dramatically, including parts of Hershey and Campbelltown and, and, and Anvil and Lebanon and, and, and just all these areas. It was just like, it was, it was a huge jump. It jumped thousands of students. We were so excited about finding this, but we didn't know what to do with it yet. And so we said, well, why don't we go out and we'll talk with community leaders? We'll talk with them and we'll talk with principals and we'll talk with teachers and we'll talk with grandparents and we'll talk with parents. And we just want to ask questions. Hey, what have you been noticing? about youth and young people in Palmyra, what kind of things would be really important for us to know? And we found out all kinds of things about this area, but there was one thing that was said that stuck out more than any of the, the others, at least to me it did. And this is what they said. They said, in this area, one of the biggest things for students is that when school lets out, they have no place to go. And without going into too much detail in this this morning, we discovered that there are many students in this area, our neighbors, who either can't go home or don't want to go home because of home life situations. Yet they can't stay at school. So where do they go? Well, we wanted to know the answer to that question. And so we reached out to students. And we just asked them questions. Hey, what do you guys all do for fun? You know, where do you go? Where do you hang out after school? What do you do just in the area? And again, we found out all kinds of really, really good information. But again, some of the answers that we found is, well, we hang out at Sheets and at Turkey Hill. And we hang out at local parks. And we hang out at other random locations in the personal favorite response that I got for the question of what do y'all do for fun was this. Well, we just kind of make our own fun. I didn't know exactly what that meant, but I had some very good guesses. And so we said, okay, okay. We know that Encounter Church is passionate for the next generation. We know that God has physically brought us here. When we were planning to build somewhere else, he brought us here to this spot for a reason. We know that there is a huge population of youth and young adults in this area that is only going to continue to grow. And that number, mind you, that doesn't include elementary age and younger. That's just youth, sixth grade and, and young adults, I think to the age of like 29 or something like that. I mean, maybe it was 34, but there's just a, a huge amount of youth and young adults in this area. And we know that there is a serious need for a place for all these young people to go on a regular basis, and we said, okay, God, what's next? What do you have for us to do about it? And the answer came. Quite frankly, it was a very simple answer. What if? What if we built a place for all these youth and young people to come to. We have this land right here beside our church here, all this green space. What if we built something on that space to create somewhere that youth and young adults can walk to after school and they can play basketball and they can do homework and they can get tutoring and they can play games and they can get food and, and this is so important, this is one of the critical aspects of this vision. And what if we built relationships with people from this church whose main goal is to get into that space and bridge generations, reflect Christ, and use their God-given talents and service to others and literally bring the love of Jesus to life in their lives. What if we did this? You know, one of our five values is communities transformed. And as a measure for that, we ask this question, are you close to someone far from God? Are you close to someone far from God? 
Well, what better way to do this than to have a place that is constantly filled with people from the community, youth and young adults, who don't have a place to go but could come to here because it would be a desirable place to go. And they may or they may not know Jesus. And then we have the opportunity to interact with them and to build relationship with them and to get to know them and get to know their names and get to know their stories and to just love them. Because that is what Christ did for us and that is what he calls us to do for others. Now, we recognize, obviously, that this vision doesn't just happen overnight. There are still so many steps to take, including multiple legal hurdles to jump, zoning and green space and parking and, and water drainage. My prayer this morning is for everyone who is listening to this here this morning to join us in prayer. Because with every single God-given vision, there is always an enemy that is trying to thwart what God is doing. So please pray, cover this in prayer. We are stepping out in faith this morning and believing that what God has placed on our hearts, he will bring to fruition. But we also don't want to wait. We don't want to wait to start implementing some of these things. And the good news is that we don't have to. We already have this building right here, right now that we can start with. And so over the next few weeks and months and years, what we're going to start doing is implementing various ways to utilize this building more and to mobilize this church family throughout the entire week. What needs does this community have that we can meet? Where can we volunteer? You know, how in living out our mission to bring Jesus' love to life, can we help people say more and more, as Terry mentioned the other day, man, you guys are everywhere. And we already have some great ideas. Like, what if we just simply open the lobby in the gym after school? So students can have a, a safe place to walk to and they can come and maybe they can get coffee and they can sit and they can do homework and they can play basketball in the gym or they can just hang out with their friends. Maybe we can do coffee houses in the evening so there's something to do in the evening. You know, what if we do something as simple as ordering pizza and having pizza bowl available at the church after home football games? So rather than wandering around Palmyra at night, everybody can come to the church and just have a safe place to enjoy pizza with friends. And we as the church body can just join them in that and have this touch point here with that person and that touch point there with that person and see that person in the grocery store and say, hey, I saw you at church. How are you? And we can just build those relationships one step at a time and bring Jesus' love to life in a very tangible way. Now, obviously, again, we can't implement all these things at once, and this list isn't comprehensive, and some ideas will work better than others, but we'll figure that out. We'll figure that out, and we'll keep moving forward in this God-given future. And frankly, I wish I had a couple more hours to be able to discuss this at length with y'all because it is so exciting what God can do with us, this church moving forward. And there will be more discussions on this in the future, so pay attention for that. This was just a snapshot, a teaser, if you will, of what God has placed on our hearts and again, our hope, no matter if you have been here your entire life or you are tuning in for the first time this morning, that you will want to be a part of what God is doing as we all move together into the future and bring his love to life.